Actually, that reminds me, Nicholas. We the need to get together too. <laughs> yeah, we need to do the OBS <laughs> thing as well, don't we? Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> yes, uh, perfect timing for me to start talking about something else. But welcome, everyone. <laughs> this is a, the weekly PyScript Py community call. I'm going to be your driver uh, today, and Nicholas is going to be your um, minute keeper. Um, so let's start with, well, I don't. There are no newcomers to the call today, so I think we can skip any intros or anything. Um, announcements, Nicholas, I think you have both of them. Yeah, two of them. Uh, the first one is that this morning, uh, the 2024 5.1 um, release of PyScript went out. Uh, it's a whopper. Uh, there's lots of changes in there uh, and changes to things uh, within PyScript, like MicroPython is completely updated. It now has a Sync IO support built in by default and all sorts of really good stuff like that, which I find really exciting, but I'm a nerd. So there you go. That tells you everything you need to know. Um, so please go play with it. Uh, tell us what's broken and things like that. Uh, as always, huge congratulations to Andrea, who really did most of the work. Um, so <laughs> uh, thanks. Uh, thanks for all of that. Um, other features that I'm thinking off the top of my head include WebSocket support. Um, what else have we got in there, Andrea? Yeah. Um, can't see the change notes now but uh, there's lots of new interesting things in there um added to that because we had the docs week a fortnight ago and last week i did a whole bunch of editing on that um a completely new version of the docs is up as well um so lots of rewrites lots of simplification lots of corrections um as well so please take a look we even managed to find the esoteric setting in the uh in the toml file that switched on search so that's now on um, so you'll be able to use uh, search too um, again thank you andrea for all the work in docs week um, the faq was a thing of beauty as well um, so that's uh, going to help us an awful lot over on discord when people ask yet again the same question again we can we've already done that once already with a meeting this afternoon for a gentleman who is a professor in the us uh, we were able to send him in the right direction so um, those are the two announcements. As always, we love feedback. We love pull requests. We love people making suggestions. Um, so that's it for announcements. Thank you, Nicholas. Yeah, great, great job uh, as usual, both of you. Um, all right, agenda items. Uh, first one is actually yours as well. Yeah, okay. Uh, PyScript is going to be at PyCon. Um, and I just thought it'd be nice to highlight for those of us who are going to be there, uh, what that's going to entail. Um, so, uh, I know we have at least one speaker here in the room talking about, uh, is it WebGL and uh, writing games with PyScript. Uh, Valerio, formerly of this parish, is also going to be talking and, uh, and the awesomeness that is, uh, Jeff was also going to be, uh, talking to and all three of those PyScript talks are on the first day on the Friday as well. Um, there's a WebAssembly Summit on the Thursday that Fabio and I are running as well. Uh, Fabio, remember you've actually got a talk slot in there as well about the state of PyScript uh, as part of that. <laughs> uh, and uh, some of us are taking part in the education workshop uh, uh, summit by giving a PyScript based workshop in the afternoon as well, based on the event work that we've been doing as well. Um, no doubt there's going to be an open space. Um, and if you are at PyCon, uh, which is happening next week at the time of this call, um, please come along and say hello. Um, that's it. Um, so, um, Nicholas, yeah. one additional thing there as well. Um, I will be there an extra day for the sprints. Sure. I'm not sure who else was going to be, oh, but uh, I'm. Yeah. Perfect. So you will definitely be organizing a PyScript sprint or something like that. Um, you know, so if you know anyone interested, share share the word. Uh, we'll be there. Great stuff. Great stuff. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Uh, and let's let's chat on Discord about what's going on at PyCon um, while we're there. Yep. Anything else on PyCon from anyone? All right. Uh, everybody has. Really great expectations about your talk, Lucas. Just, just so you know, <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> well, it's it's gonna have pictures, so uh, it should nice. be fun. Excellent. 
<laughs> All right. Uh, so if there are no other questions or comments on the tech on topic, next one is Alex about PyScript.com editor. I think you're muted or not muted, but we can't hear okay. you. Yet, but... There you go. <laughs> can you hear me now? Yep. Yep. Um, let's see. Yeah. So while we're on the topic of PyCon, um, we did just release this. Um, uh, we have a, so if you were like the homepage, uh, you would see, let's see. Yeah, we have this uh, banner. We we have this banner up there. You click on this, and it'll lead you to. Um, we have a a page that describes um, yeah what's going on at PyCon, what booth we're at, um, some of the talks that are going on, um, PyScript open source. Yeah, so if there's any questions or anything, we have we have a lot of details on here. Sweet. Um, yeah. But yeah, and the topic of um, the editor, though, um, yeah, I, I saw some of your uh, some of your uh, requests, Lukash, and I was trying to trying to implement some of them. Um, so I wanted to see what you thought of this um, and what everybody thinks of this, really. Um, so I added this uh, cog down here, um, and it'll show a, a modal to change the font size, the theme, and if you want to do line wrapping as well. Yeah, so we can... like that. That's that's ideal, essentially. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Um, yeah, we have a couple of themes on here too. That right now, this is just on my local machine. Um, sure. I just want to see if there was any feedback that way I can implement it before we start releasing. Um, yeah, we have a we have a we have a bunch of themes. Um, it's saved to local storage at the moment, so if you were to refresh, it'll stay on there. Okay. Cool. Um, uh, we do have dark mode. So right now I have it as a setting for the editor itself, but we also have dark mode over here. Yeah. So if you want to like have them separate, you can kind of change that as well. Um, as well. Uh, and uh, the last thing I added was uh, you can also do like command or control uh, minus and plus. Um, uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. And then command zero will bring it back to normal. Okay. So command and control no longer controls the rest of the interface, only the size of the font, which is oh. what you expect. Yeah, that's a that's a good point. Um, I yeah, I, I don't want to, for accessibility issues, I didn't want to take away the ability to increase everything. Mm -hmm. So if you if you're if you're not focused on the editor and you press command. Oh, and press okay. Remote, Interesting. Okay. So that's yeah, that that's uh that's good to know. I like, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, right. yeah, that's I'm advanced. glad you brought that up. Um, but yeah, I also have if there's a yeah, I also added the shortcuts. So if we ever forget like what the what the shortcuts are, that's really nice. Yeah, I, I often missed it, to be very honest. Yeah, uh, could you um, in key, in keyboard shortcuts, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Like, could you actually just put like a little comment there that like decrease font size when like when focused on the editor or something like so that it's it's uh kind of obvious that like that this is separate from uh when you're not like that that would be just enough to suggest that like the behavior is different when you're not focused on the on the editor or something like i i don't know what the wording should be but like to just let people know that you can just do it easily when you're typing so like uh, it's too small okay like, can i can i increase it like can can you can you in the back see like and they're like okay fine but if you're not focused then uh, essentially, just decreasing the size of your editor because the rest of the UI is, starts getting bigger is a little like surprising. So just having this little comment there, I think more than one person is going to find out like, oh, okay, that that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah, maybe yeah, like cool. at least like maybe underneath this or to the side of it, saying like when focus is when editor is focused or something. Yeah, cool. I like that. I like that. On the other hand, though, isn't it funny? <laughs> people looking and expecting the weird behaviors i don't know i you know as a prank i would live it for a week and then <laughs> <laughs> anyway yes that's a better idea um no don't don't listen to me uh anything else from for alex this will be deployed um, by pycom yeah yeah it'll probably be released this week um, 
Yeah, yeah, we'll try and get it released this week. I, I have another question about PSDC, PyScript.com, sorry, PSDC. Uh, PyScript.com um, uh, in, in getting ready for PyCon. Um, can we have it so that the default um, template uses the latest release, the 2024.5.1 oh, yes. as well? And uh, Martin, I know you sort of uh, mentioned it in passing, but uh, the Hello World thing that you start off with starts as a Pyodide app and takes like five seconds to start. Whereas if it were MicroPython, it would just appear as if by magic in under half a second. I don't know what people feel about um, about changing the default to MPY. Um, so Martin and I talked about this last week, actually. Um, the main issue right now is that there are corner cases where MicroPy you like some things that you would expect with micro with Python, they're just not the same with MicroPython. Um, so how can we document that or something like this? Um, and there are, there are multiple approaches, right? Um, uh, Chris' approach of using MicroPython to build UI and then my Pyodide as um as for the logic seems like a good one for a generic template uh, because it give, gives flexibility. We put both interpreters there. If you are having an issue with one of them, you can try and switch to the other one. Mm -hmm. But I think at this point, the main thing really is considering the user experience to find the right balance for the, the template. Um, did I capture everything we discussed, Mark? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's, um, yeah, it is a tricky one. My, I would, I would, I would say go Mike Python, but the, the, the lack of visibility in some ways of what packages are available in Mike Python make it a slightly scarier starting point, right? It's like, you're more likely to have success with importing something in Pyodide than you are with MicroPython. Um, it, it, it's a but... balance, isn't it? The, the, the new docs have all of that covered, the differences between MicroPython and Pyodide with, you know, with the packaging story and things like that. Um, it, yeah. it, re related, kind of orthogonal for those of us uh, involved mm -hmm. in the open source project, I was thinking of uh, maybe mm -hmm. hacking together um, a an update to the PyScript.net which is the open source landing page. So that instead of having that GIF <laughs> that has the things in the middle, uh, it is actually just a MicroPython REPL. Um, and you can just start playing around and we can give you some, you know, maybe some buttons or something like that to press that will show you, well, how do I manipulate the DOM? How do I do this? How do I do that? You know, some simple getting started. And after a while you get to see, actually, this is just a Python REPL. I could just start typing in here and, and, and helping people explore that. Uh, another part of that would be at the end, oh, and by the way, this is MicroPython, but you can have C Python through PyDi. You just update the thing to say this and then, you know, just pulling people in like that. I don't know what people feel about it. I was going to bodge, um, the emphasis is on bodge, bodge together an example so people could have a look and, you know, we could um, we could refine from that first bodge, um, as it were. Yeah, on that net, yeah, we could be fairly trivial to make changes. Yeah. Um, yeah. All right. Anything else on the topic? Awesome work, or Alex, actually... as usual. Thank you. Yep. All right. There are no other topics in the agenda. Uh, anything else? Any considerations? Any comments? Um, any call for action given PyCon coming? Well, we... I have a question that uh, I know people will ask me. So when you have PyODide and it tracks CPython, uh, when will there be PyODide on Python 3.12? That's a question for Hood. Yeah. Hood will be okay. there. Yeah. And, okay. uh, you know, um, he'll be at the WebAssembly Summit if you're if you're going, uh, Lukash. I, I don't know if... You, did you meet Hood when you were at EuroPython? Um, yeah. I okay. did. So, you, so you, you know each other, no, from Python, yeah. as it were. You can ask him. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's an upstream right, thing. Yeah, that's that's the one thing that I was wondering about. Yeah. Yeah. 
All right, then. Uh, at this point, there are no other questions or anything. I'll say let's call it at let's call it and thank you all for joining and see you next week at PyCon. <laughs>